Hey folks, welcome back. Today we're going to be going through how to create an advanced hair shader for Eevee. Obviously, most of you know that the principled hair BSDF inside of Cycles is really amazing looking. I've done a couple tutorials on it, but it was really, really slow. So what I did was I went to work to try and find a more quick way to render hair for simulations and for some characters and stuff. As you see here, we have this little gentleman and I use this as sort of a sort of like character model to test out my new node. And this node is going to be available on my Gumroad, but I'm going to show you how to basically create something kind of like this. Not not the whole like group like this here, this entire shader, but I'm going to show you the principles on how to create something similar to this. And I'll just let you know that the difference between render times was like, you know, five seconds per frame compared to like 15 minutes or something like that per frame on my RTX 3090 with a bunch of hair and stuff like that. So this is all going to be available on my Gumroad. The link is going to be down in the video description uh, with this advanced hair shader, but I'm going to show you the general idea behind it so you can make your own shader if you want to do so. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is basically how to create a generalized shader with a couple basic shaders inside of Eevee. So let's just change this to solid mode and we're going to add a couple shaders here. So the first one that I'm going to put in is a diffuse shader. So if we look at this and I'm using the Node Wrangler add-on, so make sure that you enable that. But basically, if we look at this in the rendered view, and I'm just going to isolate to the hair here so you can see everything that we're doing. The diffuse is basically just going to have some colors, okay? So that's going to be coloring the strands of the hair. Now, when we want to add a roughness or shininess to this, what we need to add is a glossy shader. And we're going to add these together. So a lot of times people like to use a mix shader to do some things like this and use a factor. But what we're going to do is we're going to add these together. So if I hit Shift S and I change this to an add shader and I put this one here and this one here and we view through this add shader, you can see that now we have a roughness when we move this glossy roughness to the left and to the right. Okay, so we can have a glossiness to that as well as the diffuse. And from here, what we can do is we can add an input RGB like this place that color inside of these two here, and then change the color. So pretty basic. And a lot of people, a lot of tutorials online, I have seen show how to do this. Now on YouTube, there are a lot of people who show how to make something basic like this. But I was feeling like this was missing a little bit of realism because a lot of hair, actually, you have this sort of like see-through effect, kind of like a glass. So if we also put in a glass shader here, and we're going to use an add shader again and we're just going to link these here and we're going to view through this add shader it's going to add this sort of effect here now what you need to do in ev to make sure this is working right you need to go to your shader properties right here the material properties go to settings and make sure you have this stuff checked on right here so i'll leave it there for a second so you can pause the video and then if i go to the render settings here and then you need to turn on stuff like this screen space uh, reflections and the refraction here. I like to turn off the half res, but this is to make sure that you actually have a glass effect happening with your shaders. The other thing that you'll want to make sure that you're using is underneath curves right here, use strip. And this works with the old way of doing the hair simulations and the new way. This is actually using the geometry nodes version. I'm not going to show you all that kind of stuff. There's a, there's like way too many tutorials now on how to do all that. So you can follow one of those tutorials, but this will work on either. And just, I like to use this additional subdivision at three because it looks really nice when you have a lot of hair. So what you can do here, let's just move this over a little bit. What you can do here is with the glass, you can actually control how much this is visible by taking the color and dropping the value all the way down. It like basically turns it off. So if I go between this add shader and this one, you can see it's basically not there. And if I add just a touch and I add a color to it or something and we can pull it up, you can see that that is happening right there. Okay, so you can control sort of like a layer of shininess or like a pass through look depending on the lighting that's going on in your scene. And you can control how much is being added by the actual value right down here. So you can just add a touch like this and if we pull the saturation down to zero, it's just having a little bit of a pass through if that's what you're looking to do. Now, obviously the base mesh in the middle here, we're kind of looking up its skirt here, but um, 
if you uh, if you have a mesh underneath, you won't see as much of a pass through effect here. So just keep that in mind. Now, the next thing that a lot of people want to do, and it's what is so fantastic about the principled hair BSDF that's in cycles, is that there's a randomization of colors. So you can actually have little bits of gray coming in, or you can have different types of color just sort of like passing through. And there is a little bit of a change that happened between the newer versions of Blender and the older ones. So what we need to do is instead of a hair node, we need to find the curves node, okay? So you see here it says curves info. So search for that with shift A search and type in curves info. And we have a whole bunch of things that we can do here. So you can see if we hold control shift and left click and we go down to this random and we look at this, you can see that there's basically a random value. That's why we have these black and white values here that's attributed to each curve. So if we take that and we do a color mix color node here, we can take this random and pipe it into this bottom and then take this color, put it in the top. And if we view through that and we change this to like a multiply, and there's different ways you can do this, but if we change it to a multiply and we take the factor and we move it over, you can see that now there's a randomized darkness and light or lighter values that are mixed within our color here. And if we take a converter color ramp and put that in between and add a bunch of flags, so if I add a few like this and move these around, we can actually control the different random colors here. And I'm gonna change this to ease just to have a little bit more of a, a little bit more in the gradient here. And we can move these around and you can change this factor here for how much you wanna add and if you wanna have zero. And so once we have this sort of set right here, we can take that result, pipe that in here, and then we can view through this add shader here. And you can see that now we have a randomized color coming through our materials. And if we go over to the add shader, we can see how this glass BSDF is interacting with the randomized color as well. And you can see that there's still that sort of pass through sheen look going on there. So that's pretty awesome. Now, one thing to keep in mind is what you might wanna do is have a, let's go here to a search and we're gonna look for value. And what you might wanna do is control all of the roughness like this. So if we take these and pipe these into here. You might wanna control all of the roughness with one of these value nodes so you don't have to keep changing each one, but you might wanna change each one independently also. So I'm just gonna remove that. I just wanted to show you that you could do that pretty easily there. So the other thing that you might wanna do, like I said, is add some aging to your hair color. So if we pull all these over, and if you wanna try and do this on your own, you're more than happy to do that and see if your method is the same as mine or better or whatever. What we can do is we can take the same random here and we can take this color ramp, move it up here like this. And let's just move a couple of these flags around a little bit. It doesn't you know, need to have any sort of rhyme or reason. I'm just sort of like changing some things around. And if we move this over, we're actually gonna duplicate this multiply, but we're gonna change this to a saturation, okay? And what we're going to do is we're gonna take this and we're going to pipe this right into the factor. And we're gonna take this multiply result here and put this into A. And I'm just gonna change this here to a white because really what this is doing, if we take this off actually, and I just show you, if I go all the way to the left, you can see that it's the proper RGB colors. But if I go all the way to the right, you can see that it's basically taking out all of the saturation. But if I take this color ramp and I put it into the factor, only the, the certain areas in the random strands here are going to affect this value, okay? And if we take these and move these all the way up to white, take this one and move this all the way up to white, you can see that it's changing the way that the coloring is happening. We are saturating or desaturating based on these color values here. Now, if I take this and I put a math node and I put that right here and we change this to a multiply, what we can do is we can control how much this is actually controlling the amount of saturation or desaturation. So if I multiply this up, you can see that it's becoming more gray. And if I take this value and pull it all the way down, it's basically removing all of this uh, 
effect right here. And if we look through the multiply node and we take this value and move it to zero, you can see it's completely black. And if we go to one, you can see that there's the white and the blacks there. And if we go to something like 10, you can see that's even more extreme, right? And if we look through the saturation node, you can see that effect happening. So here's zero, here's one, here's five, and here's 10, okay? Pretty great. And then all we need to do is take that and put that into these color nodes, the color input nodes for our BSDFs here. Take a look through our shaders, see if we like how that's coming along. It looks really cool. And then over here, we have the add shader for the glass BSDF here. And as you can see, the more we add, the more complex it gets and the longer it's gonna to take to render that out. But you can see we're getting a really nice result here. So you can take this same effect that I did here and you can actually make another layer of this color mixing where you actually take the entire thing, the entire set of your colors here and you make it completely desaturated, which is basically what I did for the aging overall slider here inside of my node that I created. Basically, I made it to where we can add random aging and then you can add an overall aging effect just to show you what it looks like. If we look through here, random aging all the way up looks like that. And then if we take the aging overall and I start to slide that up, you can see that it gets grayer and grayer. So you can totally do that with what I showed you here. So the next thing I want to show you is how to actually change the root color. And you can darken this or you can just change the color. It's really up to you on what you want to do. You can do all sorts of stuff with this that I'm going to show you here. So if we take a converter color ramp and let's just put it down here and we take the intercept and pipe that in and let's just take a look through this color ramp here. You can see that the root is at the top and it goes to white at the bottom. So it's black to white. So if I move this up, you can see that it becomes more and more dark as it goes down the strand and all the way over. Or if I take the white and I move it up, you can see that it's sort of clamping that value. Now, of course, you can add another flag here and control these pretty tightly, depending on what you want to do here. But I'm just going to keep this like this right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to move all this stuff over a little bit. And we're going to add a color mix node. And you can you know, try and do this if you'd like, if you want to figure out how to do this on your own really quick, and then, you know, press play <laughs> to see if you can figure out how to do this or if you have a better method. But basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take this and we're going to put this into the bottom. And then we're going to take this one here and we're going to put this into the top. Now, instead of a mix method here, we're going to change this to a multiply. And if we look through, and we take this factor and we go from the left to the right, you're seeing that it's basically multiplying that color by whatever we have here. So darker colors are going to become darker and the lighter colors are kind of going to stay the same. And if we change this to a different color, you can see that's multiplying that color to the root. And if we take this and we pipe it into these nodes here and take a look through the add shader at the very, very end there, you can see that now we have a root color that's then fading to this one here. And if you ever wanted to swap these around, let's say somebody got their hair, uh, just the tips of their hair colored a particular uh, color dye or something like that, you can put that color in there. And then the other uh, side here, we can even change this to a different color. So let's say it was like more blondish or something like that, you can change that color there, where basically all of those colors are being multiplied. And of course, you can do whatever you want with this. You can basically take this curve info, pipe it into here, change your uh, compositing method here to something else, and you can play around with those values and create your own custom color changes that way. And then you can take all this stuff, group it together, and make a more complex shader like what I've created here. Now, in the one that I created, I basically have a darkness slider that can go from all the way, you know, bright to all the way dark. But I also added a redness because one of the things I really like about the, and I'm just gonna remove this aging here. What I really like is how in the principled hair BSDF, you have basically a thing that will control the darkness and then you also have a redness slider. So you have like all of these different ways of getting some more realistic looking hair, kind of like this here. And then you have, of course, the random color, which I really like because it adds that little bit of variation that I think really adds realism to it. 
And then I have created a roughness here. So if you want have like wet hair or something, it can be all the way to the left or all the way to the right if it's like super dry. And then I have a random roughness here. So the random roughness is also in the principled hair BSDF. And this just uses some different methods of the uh, same way that I showed you below. You can basically create your own method of doing these things with the stuff that I showed you. And I have some random aging here. I have random uh, or aging overall with the uh, random roughness and all this. And then I also have a direct color multiplier. So you can actually change to a direct hair color instead of having to do this here. We can actually directly change that color that way. And then we have, of course, the root darkness. And I have a cycles compensation. So if you open up cycles and you move this over, it should roughly match what EV is. I'm still working on this, as I said. And then, of course, I have this translucent stuff here, which is the glass BSDF. So the translucent reflection is basically this here. And there's a multiplier to control how that works for your particular model and how you want it to look. So with my node, I basically took pretty much the same ideas here. And I just made it, <laughs> as I often do, a little bit overly complex. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. I really hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about how to create a custom hair shader for Eevee. It's a lot faster in rendering, and I think it looks pretty darn good considering the fact that it only takes a few seconds as opposed to a few minutes per frame to render so your character animation should have some really cool hair simulations again this node is available on my gumroad if you'd like to have this already preset for you and it is a work in progress so there will be updates as time goes on of course if you're a patron the project downloads are all free provided you are at the correct tier level for free downloads and you can check that link to become a patron down below in the video description and thanks so much to all of my subscribers, to all of my YouTube members, and to my patrons. You guys are all awesome, and I will see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.